Thomas Keller is a chef, business executive, and author. His restaurants, The French Laundry, Per Se, and Bouchon, have earned seven Michelin stars and worldwide raves. He was also awarded the French Legion of Honor last year, and his fifth cookbook is now New York Times bestseller. Thomas Keller joins us here in Studio 57. Welcome. Good to be here. Thank you very uh, much. You know, she got engaged at French Laundry, and you signed a picture right. or a menu. Yes, a menu. the menu. That Pretty was good. back in 2001. It's See what your restaurant does to people? Memory. I know. <laughs> See yes. what happens there? Yes. And we're still That's married. Good. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fabulous That's a good sign. Yeah. And, and her husband has a restaurant empire. So. I, I understand. Yeah, so are you a chef yeah. now, or are you simply a business executive? Well, it, it's an interesting question, because I think, you know, like a doctor, if you move on in your profession, you're still a doctor, right. um, because you have those skills. So, I, you know, I like to consider myself still be a chef, although I don't practice those mm -hmm. skills every day like I used to. So um, I'm more of a restaurateur today um, mm -hmm. than I was 20 years ago. That when probably I was puts a chef. you in a better position to tell us exactly what's going on in your industry. Well, it's good. It's a good question. Uh, I, it's really, really strong right now. Certainly, where we are in, in Northern California, you know, Napa Valley is yeah. a, a very special place to go. Uh, good, certainly good here in New York. Good food and good wine. Good food and good mm -hmm. wine. It's, yeah. it's a place where people go to eat and drink. Yeah. Uh, certainly here in, in New York, um, we have Bouchon in yeah. uh, in L.A., uh, Beverly Hills, and certainly in Las Vegas as well. So our, our, the four markets we're in are doing are doing quite well, and we're, we're very pleased. What do you think is the most exciting thing going on with food right now and, and in the restaurant industry? Well, there are certainly a lot of things that, that you can point to, but I think one of the things that we've been talking about for years is, is our reconnection to our farmers, our fishermen, our foragers, and our garden, gardeners. And I think that, that's really important. Uh, you know, chefs, we, we call chefs celebrities and stars, and I think really uh, that notoriety should be given to, to those people who are committed, who really commit their lives to, to raising animals or, or farming for us, growing our vegetables, fishing, uh, or out, out foraging. Those are just extraordinary individuals who do that every day. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. there a common denominator among the great chefs that you have known? Well, I, you know, it, it's a good question as well. I, I think that, uh, that, that commitment, yeah. uh, uh, total dedication, and, and people always talk about, you know, what we do uh, as a profession, but it's more of a lifestyle. Uh, and it's a wonderful lifestyle. I mean, we, we get to certainly today in, in, in my generation, we get to be involved in so many different things than the last generation just get involved in. So not only, not only are we cooking, but we have the opportunity to, to write a book. We have the opportunity to, uh, you know, to design. We have the opportunity to do a lot of different things. So w our profession has become very dynamic. And for that, I, I'm very thankful. Yeah. You won the Legion d'Honneur, as I mentioned. Um, France, in many ways, was considered for a long time the best cooking, then the Italians got some attention, then American cuisine got some attention. <laughs> is there a dominant cuisine today? Uh, I think, you know, cuisine is very, uh, has become very diversified, and, uh, you know, I don't think that French is any, any less uh, great than it was 20 years ago, or, or Italian is, is any better than it was 20 years ago. I, I just think that we have become more sophisticated, more knowledgeable, and certainly as, as, the, uh, as cuisine begins to grow around the country, around the world, you see, you see more places. I mean, you see the Scandinavian countries countries right now, which are, are oh, have, have great, have <laughs> Copenhagen, great, great, especially. Yeah, great restaurants now. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's just about the next generations really embracing from, from wherever they come from, embracing the idea of becoming chefs and running restaurants. And so you see great restaurants opening all over the and world. And what's interesting about those places is they are depending on local foods, too. And yeah. Well, you know, local is an interesting is an interesting topic because lo local, you know, is, is very hard to define. Is it, is, it, is it geographically defined? Is local 25 miles, 50 yeah. miles, 100 miles? Um, I, I think that, you know, certainly we have to be respectful to locality uh, whenever possible. We also have to be respectful to uh, sustainability, and that goes far beyond ingredients. That goes to communities. Um, so we have to be able to sustain communities as well. You know, you have some of the finest restaurants in the world with the best food, but at the heart, food is something that brings people together, whether it's fine dining or simple dining in yeah. families. Yes. And you have a really interesting story about your relationship uh, with your father who, yeah. who passed away. And you've told that story. You, uh, your father left when you were young, and then you were able to reconnect with him. And you cooked him his final meal before he died. Talk about how that changed you. Well, I, I think when, you know, you know certainly as, as a youngster, and this happens in many households, you know, the parents don't get along, so they, they separate. Um, the, the, the children are, you know, are typically the ones that suffer the most. And, and I made a reconnection with my father, you know, in my early 20s and made, made sure that I tried to foster that throughout the, the rest of our lives together. And ultimately, he moved to California. And, and really cooking that final meal was something that, uh, that, that I think changes you. And, and you don't know it's the final meal, obviously. Yeah. You know, you're just making him dinner on a Sunday, Sunday night, and you don't yeah. know he's going to pass away the next day. Uh, but it was an extraordinary experience. It was very emotional. It ties you to the family. Someone very wise 
once said to me, the best food is food that's made with love. Yes, this is, this is true. There's a very emotional connection to food and what we eat. Yeah. Yeah. What's your last meal going to be? Uh, it's a good question. I think roasted <laughs> chicken would be on that list. Probably beluga <laughs> Me cabinet. too, man. Maybe a ca quesadilla and a All lemon right. tart. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. It was Thank great you. to have you here.